Our series on Kamala Harris continues now with a look back at what makes her tick. Her background is littered with political landmines. Her questionable early relationship with her so-called mentor, San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown. Her career as a prosecutor with a penchant for jailing black and brown defendants for minor crimes. Her early claims to being Indian before choosing to call herself black, all leading to a failed run for president. So who is Kamala Harris anyway? And how did she end up a heartbeat away from the Oval Office? Joining me now is Harmie Dillon, managing partner of the Dillon Law Group and co-chair of the Republican National Lawyers Association. Harmie, thanks for joining us. You know, for me, you know, we'll get to some of the other stuff, the, you know, the relationship with Willie Brown and some of the other, but for me, you know, she was, uh, Kamala Harris was district attorney in, in San Francisco. Then she was uh, attorney general of the state of California. Then she was senator for California. And all the while, she was very tough on, on African Americans and minorities, criminals, which some would like, but she really has flip flopped on that since she's since her time there in those positions, has she not? Well, look, I think you want to look at it a little differently, and this is a problem with how we have a lot of criminal laws in this country, so many that it's very easy for prosecutors to really throw the book at people selectively. And so, like any career prosecutor who's ambitious and wants to run for office, they like to build up their stats. And when they're running for that first office, they like to say, I was really tough on crime and I put away a bunch of criminals. Well, the easiest and lowest resistance of those crimes are prosecuting poor people and prosecuting minorities in the inner cities for minor drug offenses and for minor infractions like that. And we're not talking about a long list of murder prosecutions or serious violent crime or organized crime. It was petty offenses that helps you bulk up mm -hmm. your track record. And that's what she did in, uh, in her early prosecutorial career successfully. And she used that as a stepping stone to run for district attorney in San Francisco in a city where the then prosecutor, uh, Terrence Hallinan, was similar to the one we have right now, Chesa Boudin, very liberal, did not believe in prosecuting crime. So she was easily able to distinguish herself by, 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 those, uh, by those measures. Right, right, right. And then, but in the part being, the hypocritical part being, once she ran for president, she failed, but when she ran for president, I remember the debate stage, people were taking shots at her, like, hey, what, what about this, this whole pro-minority and, and, and uh, criminal justice reform ticket that you're trying to push now? She flipped on her her complete history, asking the American people, forget about what I had just done, here's the new me now. Which one is it? Which one is she? Well, Eric, I actually did a good Wall Street Journal review of this, of all the different issues. And I looked at her flip-flops on a number of issues, including marijuana prosecutions, truancy is one, where she threatened to put a lot of uh, minority, mainly minority parents in jail, and many other offenses. And so when it is politically expedient, of course, you see politicians of both parties, but certainly Kamala Harris is a prime example, flip-flopping to tap into what's currently vogue. And what's currently vogue in the Democratic Party, of course, is being lenient on crime and being almost pro-criminal as opposed to pro-victim. California, for all that people point at us and laugh, actually has some pretty good victims' rights laws. And uh, you've seen these Democrat prosecutors completely run roughshod over the statutory and constitutional rights of California crime victims. And, and Kamala Harris is part of that, part of that trope. Can you um, explain to our, to our audience what exactly went down with, with Willie Brown and you know, the, the controversy surrounding it? Well, so I am not one to gossip, so I'm gonna recount what I have heard either with my personal you know, experience or what I've read in, in, in media publications. So, and I've lived in San Francisco throughout this whole time. It's now, uh, you know, 21 years here in the Bay Area. So it's been reported by top you know, liberal magazines here extensively about uh, Kamala Harris's relationship with Willie Brown, who is a married man. He's had a number of affairs over the years with a number of different women, most of whom, whom end up in city government or state government or some cushy job after the relationship ends or during the relationship. I don't track that. But separately, he has to me and others openly referred to Kamala as his you know, former girlfriend and when they were dating. So it's not a secret that they had a relationship. The thing that is controversial about it, in addition, of course, to uh, moral issues, is the fact that while he was a Speaker of the House, 
he had significant power over over uh, political appointments in the state. You know, the speaker has some, the governor has some, and he provided Kamala Harris with a couple of those appointments that provide monetary compensation as well. And these were stepping stones to her future political career. So that's the part in particular that's uh, that's questionable. That is how she got her first start in state government. All right, All right Harmeet, thank you for joining us on our series on Kamala Harris, heir apparent. My pleasure. Thank you, Harmeet. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.